Hello there, I'm Scotty, and you're not. And this is a last minute thing I wanted to do. Originally, I was going to review Constantine. I was trying to watch this on Peacock, and I just, I couldn't hear anything. I turned my volume all the way up to 60, and it, you still couldn't understand what they were saying. So, eventually I'll have to get to that at some other point in time. But I thought I'd be creative. And instead, we're going to explore... The Bill and Ted movies. Uh, these movies have been part of my life since I was a kid. My grandma rented them for me. For some reason, I got into them. And, yeah. So, the journey takes us all the way back to an excellent adventure in 1989. Well, the movie takes place in 1988. We have the two great ones. Bill S. Preston, Esquire, Ted Theodore Logan. Together they are... Wild Stallions! Uh, in the future, way into the future, where uh, bowling averages are way up, mini golf scores are way down, and there's more excellent water slides than any other planet they communicate with. And the music is most excellent. Uh, we are introduced to Rufus, and then he tells us about the two great ones, Bill and Ted, and how it was almost derailed by a history, uh, history review, history, final history test thing that they have to do. So, yeah, the whole movie is about them trying to pass a history exam so that they can eventually become the foretold ones. Uh, I do not hate any of these movies. I love all these movies. I... I don't know if I could even rank them, to be honest. I love them all. Even the new one, which you think I would have, because there's so much. You think of a movie that, a sequel that comes out all those years later, and most of the time you think, oh, it's, you know, it's crap. It doesn't do anything. But I think it fits the spirit of the entire series. Bar some retconning, which we'll get into that. But, yeah, and the cast. You got Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter, as Bill and Ted, respectively. George Conlon is Rufus. Uh, I really don't. Let me look at the rest of the cast here. Only list those three. Okay. And among others, you've got, you know. And if you think about it, like, this could also teach you something about history, too. Because you got, you got Billy the Kid, who technically died when in his mid, early, early to mid-20s. And Dan Shore was, like, almost 30. I think, if not 30, the guy who played Billy, if Socrates, a Socrates, uh, Sigmund Freud, Joan of Arc, who is not Noah's wife, uh, Genghis Khan, Dave Beethoven, I'm sorry, Be Beethoven, Ludwig van Beethoven, uh, Abraham Lincoln, Napoleon, who, according to Deacon, is a dick, which kind of was. And, uh, is that it? I want to say that's it, right? Yeah, and you just have all those characters come together in their own little way. It works to me. It, it, it's fantastic. I These are one of the first few reviews I did. They're the first two reviews I did for Keanuverse. I do want to revisit these, but I figured this is the best way to talk about them. Uh, the first one... Of course, I would have to say this is my favorite because it's my favorite movie ever. Like, it's this is my favorite movie ever. Like, you guys, me, this is my favorite movie you've ever seen. This is the movie. It's my favorite movie. Uh, I could see here. Like, I, when I did those reviews, I did not even rewatch these movies. I sat there and I knew every single thing on the top of my head. Sure, a rewatch would have helped. But I sat there. In both reviews and just you know went off because I knew them so well it's what you could do with that with those kind of movies that's how well I knew them and I can quote them you know it's one of those movies I mean anyway you know everyone has that one movie that you put in and you quote everything line for line for line this and the breakfast club are those two movies there was a point I was at my friend Eric's place and he, we were they were watching Breakfast Club and me or we were here or something. Him and his 
me and his girlfriend at the time, we were watching it and we were going line for line. He's like, you know what? We're changing it because I ain't going to sit here and listen to you guys recite the whole damn movie. So, no, but this is line for line, man. I, I could I could do this movie. Some is misquoted, not exactly, but you know what I mean, for the most part. Even, like, the special effects are great. Both movies, both original two movies have some deleted stuff, and I'll talk about that before I get to the third sequel, or the, the, the third film. But, overall, the first film is most excellent. The whole time travel thing is pretty cool. I even like that the circuits of time through the time booth. It's a good, fun time. It does get wonky when you think of, like, especially with these first two films, they establish that they are meant to win. They are meant to succeed no matter what. But if that's the, the case, then why did Rufus have to come back at all if they're meant to succeed? Like the whole thing, from the beginning, Ted's dad's keys are missing. In the end, they find out that they took his keys and dropped him off there, which, if they were behind the sign the whole time, why did nobody see them? Because they're not supposed to see them. But then again, that's how it's sort of a plot hole. Like, you think someone would see a set of keys laying behind a sign, you know. But they go on there, and they're able to do it. Oh, yeah, I got your keys. And then the trash can. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit iffy. Trash can. Don't forget a trash can. Where did it come from? Was the other tent up there the entire time holding the thing? Who knows? Um, and even when they meet the future versions of themselves, it isn't that implies that they are supposed to do this anyway. They're destined to do this in an endless loop to just keep meeting meeting each other. So, no matter what, they were going to succeed. So, what was so? Why was it so important for us to go back? I don't know. Maybe he had to go back. I don't know. Yeah, and a happy ending. They get the princesses, which they meet in here. Who? You'll see. And uh, they, they're saved from the royal ugly dudes and taken to some place called the mall. And then they had the joke where they play instruments and they suck. And you have Rufus looking to the screen. They do get better. You know? It's, it's fun. It's fun. And then you get to Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Bogus Journey should be at that point. Like, it's one of those things where, like, you're going to do a sequel. Someone sat down and said, okay, Bill and Ted X Adventure, they're really good. Let's make a sequel. You don't want to make the sequel exactly like the original, which Face Music sort of did. We'll get to that. Uh, so what are we going to do? We'll go in a complete opposite direction. And we're going to kill off Bill and Ted, but not in any old normal way like someone's not going to show up from the future and shoot them no 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 it's not it's going to be anybody either it's going to be two robot versions of them from the future who show up pretending to be future versions of them which technically they are i guess and then push them off a cliff to their death the same cliffs the i don't remember what they're called that are in the episode of star trek they're watching in the beginning of this uh and it you know it's insanity and it starts off with like chuck denominos played by the great joss acklin talking about how he wants to overthrow the Bill and Ted regime and all this stuff. But once again, from the beginning of this film, it is telegraphed that they're going to succeed. And why? How can you tell that? Because the people of the future San Dimas are saying, Station. And you're saying, if you haven't seen this movie many times like me, you may be saying, okay, what's that? Well, they meet station which is two little eight martians that can whoosh themselves together and make a big martian and all he says is station or station that's it and that's where the phrase station comes from so with that in mind knowing what you haven't watched the movie before that comes back to you and you think okay the fact that they're saying station means that they're going to succeed anyway. They were always meant to succeed. No matter what the Nominos did, they were going to succeed. And again, at the end, we get that. It comes full circle where he's like, we'll have a, they're like, we have a cage. They'll get rid of the gun. Psst. Sandbag comes down, gets rid of the gun, and there's a cage. And then Nominos is like, 
Well, that's why I will come back and set up a key, which just pops. And another gun, which just materializes. And turns out it's a fake one. Because they set up the key, and they set up the gun. Again, I... Someone was up there with the cage, and the key was there, but... I, a gun just materializing in his hand. How does that work? You don't think about this stuff, right? You don't think about this stuff. But we get, this movie is a wild ride from beginning to end because Bill and Ted are killed off by future robot versions of them. They die and are to be taken somewhere to the afterlife by death. They give him a wedgie, which they call Melvin, and run back to save the princesses. But it's too late. They break up with them, even though they um, proposed to them earlier. And the one joke that hasn't aged well for me was, I wonder if, if once we're married, the girls will stay over with us. Well, you're going to live together. In fact, if they're going to propose to them, they should have been living together already. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and there is a running joke throughout all three of these movies about Missy. She was married. She was married. She's technically like three or four years older than the boys. She, they were a freshman. She was a senior. Ted asked her the prompt. She was married to Bill's dad in the first one. And she's married to Ted dad in this one. And then she's married to Ted's little brother Deacon in the next one. Who's played by Beck Bennett from SNL. First part, he was okay. But, yeah, that's the running joke. She was marrying all these people in the family. I think they should, like, they, like, we'll get to that in the third one, but, but yeah, and I'm not, I'm not done. So, they decide to go to Missy's seance and try to contact them to help, but she sends them to hell. And there we get hell scenarios where Ted took the candy from the East, from his brother's Easter basket in was little. Bill gets attacked by Granny S. Preston. Why she has an S in him, I don't know. It's actually um, Keanu Reeves, or not Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter in the makeup as Granny S. Preston. And then they have the, the, the co one with Colonel Oates. Fantastic actor, by the way. I've seen him in other things, but he is the best in here. Colonel Oates. And yeah, uh, then they got to play the Reaper. And. The Reaper is played by the great William Sadler. And, uh, yeah. And so they play all these games, which is supposed to be a callback to the Seventh Seal, an Ingmar Bergman film. And, uh, uh, yeah. Then they go to heaven. And they find a Martian that's going to help them build good robot houses. And that's not it. It was going to be even wackier in the original version. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but uh, they go back... And they're going to fight at the Battle of the Bands, where very quickly, the good robot uses punch off the heads of the evil robot uses. And then Donamos comes in, we get the whole exchange that I mentioned earlier, and then he's arrested by Ted's dad, which gets confusing in the next one. Believe me, this. Also, then we have them traveling through time to learn how to play, and they do Kisses, God Gave Rock and Roll to You, which is a great song. And we get all this stuff in the end credits, which has been, like, not retconned, but, like, it's been sad that none of that was even really true because that was just something that the crew did, the, the crew put in there. It was never supposed to be canon. Uh, so when, when the new one came out, people were like, oh, wait a minute, Missy married Denomlos, and all this happened, and they achieved the world peace. Well, you knew there was going to be something. If there's going to be a third film. They never intended for one. I think they just wanted this to, you know, be in two films, which is fine. Uh, I was wanting the third one. But before I get to the third one, there is some deleted stuff from these two films. The first film, there was an extended season, no, no, extended sequence with the cavemen, which we only get a brief glimpse in. Uh, they were supposed to have an extended sequence with that. And originally... The final exam took place in a classroom. There's even pictures of that. And the caveman stuff. But they changed it to the auditorium. Because it, honestly it worked better. And they got rid of the caveman stuff. The second one had the most taken out. There was a lot of scenes taken out of this one. Um, 
most notably, the there was a scene. Okay, so there's a scene where they're at the hardware store, and they call Missy's house looking for the princesses, whatever. They get the Evil Bill and Ted, and Evil Bill says, Go let get into the concert, losers. And nothing happens. So what was the point of that? Well, because originally in the script, Evil Bill and Ted were going to summon evil, monstrous versions of Colonel Oates, Easter Bunny, and Granny S. Preston to fight them off. There was even a speech they were going to get to give about facing their fears. It's in the extended version of the Reaper rap. Where they talk about, face your fears, dude. Yeah, I'm a honey bun or something. And maybe it'll get smaller. It'll even go away. That kind of thing. And there was other stuff to lead to. I don't remember. Let's see. I can't read this thing. But yeah, there was other stuff that was deleted from it. Of the subplots. Shrunken down. I wish I would have kept some of the stuff. But you know. Oh, there was one thing you can still sort of see. So in an extended sequence where Missy and the girls, they asked. When the girls asked, who are you? Well, you see, and they show the robot versions. In the other, in an, in the extended scene, they unzip their bodies to reveal that Evil Bill is Evil Ted, and Evil Ted is Evil Bill. And if you pay attention when they, when they, in the phone call habits, you can see their unzipped, unsuited body parts, unzipped body costume things on the floor. That's the only ones I can remember. But we get to Bill and Ted face the music coming out in 2020. A movie I really wanted to see in the theater. But, you know, shit happens. And I was pissed. I mean, you, you, I, mean I think I said this in my review, but I was really pissed. Because I was too young to see the other ones in, in the movie theater. You know, I was a little. So, you know, I was like two when the first one came out. So, And four when the second one came out. So I couldn't really, you know, see those. But this one, I was looking forward to it so much to go seeing it in theaters and I couldn't because of a pandemic bullshit but I was able to watch it on me Xbox the night of premiere and I got the blu-ray when it came out on the physical meteors and uh yeah and this did fulfill what I wanted but also I do feel like they did need to do some retconning not with all the stuff at the end of the second one but they created this Oh, you have to write the song that will save the universe and put everything together. And they claim that Rufus kept talking about it, even though it was never mentioned once. It was implied that what happened at the end of Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey was what brought them together. This never happened. I also feel like the presence of, like, there wasn't really an antagonist where, you know... Um, Colin Taylor's character wasn't really a villain. She was just trying to make sure that history was fulfilled. She thought that killing Bill and Ted was what would happen. And I did call it when I saw it, when I did my trailer reaction, that it was going to be Billy and Thea, their daughters, even though they were boys. And people like, oh, well, you know, little Bill and little Ted, that was a joke, right? Yeah. No, they were boys. And they decided in this, in this time of, the Me Too mute movement, oh, they have to be girls because that's what we're doing nowadays. And let's face it, if they weren't girls, they were going to be trans because we can't leave stuff alone. But I was fine with the girls thing. And they didn't push it as much with the whole it was them the whole time thing because I felt like it was handled well enough. It's like, oh, uh, the song is written by Preston and Logan, but it didn't say Bill S. Preston or Ted Theodore Logan. Just Preston and Logan will write the song. It works in the context of the movie, and I didn't hate it as much as I thought I was going to, but I knew it was going to happen because it was so obvious. I also like the multiverse angle because everything is doing multiverse nowadays, so it works. And like I said, it sort of copies the original, but them going back, the dollars this time going back in time to collect historical figures, but they're historical music figures, like, um, uh, Mozart, uh, I can't remember the, Mozart, oh, 
What's his name? Jimmy. You know, he did the Hulk Hogan theme song. <laughs> I, I can't remember his name, but yeah, they go back there and they do the. Give me Paige. No, that's the wrong man. Jimmy. I can't remember his name, but and among others, the. That guy, Sachimo, Louis Armstrong. Yeah, there we go, Louis Armstrong. Jimmy Hoffa. No. Jim, I forget his name. But, you know, and it and it worked. Also, though, they reintroduced death. And I think this is like one of the weaker parts. Not death's appearance itself, but the fact that it really feels like he was put in last minute. Like, because there was fan demand. The original... The original script for this did not have death in it at all, and there was fan demand for him to be in there. So, they brought him back, and it, from where, if he was, like, he's not in the entire film, he's in a small part towards the end. And I feel like that was like a last minute rewrite to put him into the script, and that's fine. I, I, I love William Sadler's death, it works, and they write the song that saves the world, the movie does, and abruptly it was written by that wasn't really even written it just start boom boom dun dun boom 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 but uh yeah Jimmy Buffett no I'll get it eventually <laughs> and I love I love I'm Dennis Caleb McCoy although like, his character is kind of vague. Like, was he Kelly's ex-boyfriend or not? I like the tribute to George Carlin. I like the fact that they named Kelly, the character's daughter, Kelly, after George Carlin's real daughter. It was in the film, but I couldn't tell you which character she was. But, uh, but, yeah, overall, all three films, I think, connect good enough. They did a good enough job with the third one, connecting to the other two, mentioning stuff. There was the multiverse stuff, which is really cool. Going to the future to see the future versions of them. Yeah, it worked out real well. Uh, so yeah, overall, I think that as a trilogy, it works well. Do I want another film? I gotta say, yeah, because it's Bill and Ted, but do we need another film? No. I think all three films are fine as a trilogy. I know nowadays, trilogy's not enough. People would say, oh, we gotta make more, gotta make more, gotta make more. I think... This is solid enough. And they've completed their mission. The only thing I could see them doing, and please don't do this, is doing a spinoff with the daughters. Because why not? Right? They didn't shove them down our throats with this, but I could see them doing some sort of spinoff with the daughters. Don't do that. Just leave it like this. Just leave it at this. Alright? Just leave it. <laughs> Overall, I enjoyed this trilogy. I should have done this for Bill and Ted Day, but didn't even think about it. I don't think I was even doing this series yet, but there it is. And this does count as my Keanu Reeves thing for the figure poison. I know it's a bit of a cheat, but it's the only thing I can come up with. It's short amount of time I'm trying to get things done. So, yeah. So, what are your thoughts on these films? Let me comment below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.